Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I've got another really cool replay lined up for you guys from the 1k subscriber replay contest and this is actually going to be the very last best of the rest video before we come to the winners of this contest. Now this here is Sweetie99 who's platooned up with Rain112 and obviously Sweetie is from Sweden and he's going to show us how to play the T-32 like a boss. Now the T-32 is an amazing vehicle, I've got one myself and I really love it two bits. And uh, we can see that Sweetie obviously is being quite serious about this T-32. He's got camouflage on his tank, he's apparently got quite a good crew because he's got 6 sense skill and stuff. And right there he puts a great first shot in against the Centurion. Quite a low roll though, but still. Uh, a low roll on the T-32 at tier 8 is still quite a lot of damage. And there's a the second shot and it makes up for the low roll before by causing a massive engine fire. And sadly enough he leaves the Centurion on 54 health and he's just finished off just before Sweetie can put in the finishing shot, which is a real shame. Still Sweetie did a lot of damage with that fire and now he's engaging with VK4501A. Oh, it's actually 4502A, sorry. And there's an IS-6, which is quite a tough not to crack with a T-32's gun. And, yeah, that shot would never hit the IS-6, but, you know, you can always try. So, Sweetie's mate here in his T-26E for Super Pershing is on half health due to uh, an engine fire. And the score's 3 to one and Sweetie's located around the cap circle here. And this is a really strong location for the T-32 because you can use its great gun depression and great um, turret armor to kind of go hold down behind these undulations here and hilt. And you can see his turret, um, you know, bouncing all the shots for enemies here basically. Okay, fair enough, it's tier 6 tanks, but, uh, you know, if you let them set their DPM to work for those American tier 6 mediums, they can be quite a pain in the ass. But they've basically got no chance frontally against the T-32. Now he takes an HE splash damage hit there from a KV-2 I believe. And because of that he misses a shot um, on the Sherman Jumbo there. Which is a shame. But <laughs> he gets a second engine fire on the KV-1S. And that gets him his first kill in this game. <laughs> Two engine fires in a row, that's really cool. So, let's see if we can finish off this KV-2 here. Ah, yeah, that's kill number two. And, uh-oh, there's a KV-13. That's quite a rare tank, actually. You don't see them that often. So, he fires a blind shot. Looks like that one connected. Let's hope that it hit. And here's a KV-2. Now, the KV... You have to be careful with the KV-2, because it doesn't matter uh, how well he's armored, because the KV-2 has got uh, HE ammo, so he will just do 300 damage anyway. Now he's being flanked by a T-69 and luckily his ally takes out the KV-2 because he has to focus on this T-69 and luckily he tracks the T-69 and now he gets ammo rack but Sweetie repairs the ammo rack and it's, the T-69 is really one of the most dangerous tanks to get flanked by because it's got that autoloader clip that it can unload really really easily and really quickly and it hasn't got that much penetration but if it manages to flank round then the penetration doesn't really matter and it can just really deal out loads of damage within a very short time. Now, uh, Sweetie takes out that T69 very luckily, and now he auto aimed at that uh, Panzer SFL5 and popped out to take a shot. That's a tactic that I myself use quite often too. If you're trying to poke around the corner, I often try to auto aim at the enemies I'm poking at before I try to turn around the corner because that means I don't have to aim my gun at them directly and uh, the gun will be aimed at the right spot and usually the right thing to do is then to disengage your auto aim just before you fire a shot to aim more precisely but it just allows you to take a shot quicker if you auto aim before poking and it seems like that's what Sweetie does here too. So now he finally manages to take out that Sherman Jumbo that's been pestering him for quite a time and he missed a shot at that guy earlier but he compensates for that now. And the score's 95, so things are looking quite secure for Sweetie's team here. 96 now, so they're losing some tanks. And here's an IS-3. Now, this is quite a tricky shot to take, and it bounces. It looks like it hit the IS-3's turret. That's quite a shame, because if he had waited a bit longer, he would have been able to get the side of the IS-3. Now the IS-3 is advancing, and yeah, he fires a blind shot. I don't think that that one hit, because it looks like the IS-3 was moving forwards, so probably would have had to aim a bit more... Uh, in front of the IS-3 in order to hit him. But he's on four kills, his platoon mate's down by the way, 
And now Sixth Sense goes up, that means he's spotted, so he retreats. And uh, you can see a lot of backup is arriving here, and his allies are starting to um, to manoeuvre around the rear for enemies, because they advance through the forest. And, okay, there's that KV-13 again, and there's a Panther 2, a Yak Panther 2. Now, he has to be careful because he's on quite low health, and the Yak Panther 2 could one-shot him if he penetrates. So he puts one nice shot into the KV-13, leaving him in one-shot range for all his allies. Can he get the kill? Uh, it bounces. Oh, what RNG. So, he's looks like he's going to take a blind shot at the KV-13. And yes, he makes it happen, gets the fifth kill. Very nice there. Good blind shot, because he had to guess the location of the KV-13 as he didn't leave his cursor over it. So he fires another blind shot of the Yak Panther 2, didn't look like it killed him, I'm not sure on what health he left him. And yeah, he still got loads of health. That shot bounced, it looks like it uh, hit the Yak Panther 2's superstructure, which is really difficult to penetrate. It amounts up to about 300mm of effective armor. And we can see that um, Sweetie here has got even the Eagle Eye perk on his gunner, which allows you to see the module damage that enemy tanks have suffered. If you mouse over them. So he's gonna fire a blind shot, but he doesn't get a sixth kill. Not sure if it hit, maybe it just bounced, we don't know. So there's an IS3 advancing, let's see if we can penetrate him. Now, one of the problems of the T 32's gun is it's kind of lowish penetration. I mean, the penetration is alright, it gets the job done, but it could be a lot better. And uh, equally tiered heavy tanks have often got better penetration, except for premium tanks, of course. So, Sweetie has still to uh, still got to be very careful here because any tanks of the enemy team could one-shot him if they get lucky, like a high roll. And the Yak Panther 2 will be able to one-shot him nearly all the time, maybe uh, 6 or 7 times out of 10. So, yeah, he has to be very careful here, especially when engaging the Yak Panther. And oh, oh, oh my days, this is a really bad situation. Now, luckily, the IS-3 donks a shot, and that allows Sweetie to put one shot into him, which kind of evens the odds between, odds between the two of them. Now he has to be aggressive, he has to push the tempo here, because he's got the faster reload. Now very luckily the IS-3 bounces again, but he has to be careful here with Sweetie, because uh, if he pushes too far, then the Yak Panther 2 might snipe him. So that shot bounces, and that was a Yak Panther 2. Uh, I think that shot penetrated, but it was luckily a very low roll for the Yak Panther 2. So, uh, can we finish off? Yes, we can finish off. No, actually, Sweetie didn't finish off the IS-3, but the Yak Panther 2 from this team did. And... Astonishingly, the Yak Panther 2 bounces again, leaving Sweetie on only 16 health. So, uh, he has to be really careful here. He's just on the brink of death. And actually, the, things are not looking that even anymore. Because it's an IS-3 and a an Yak Panther 2 against two Yak Panther 2s and Sweetie in his T-32. And Sweetie has got hardly any health remaining. So, yeah, they still have to play this carefully, but now, basically, it's three against one, so they should win it. And, basically, Sweetie is waiting for his allies to close in on this IS-3. You can see the IS-3 hasn't got the gun depression to it, Sweetie. But now the IS-3 is going all in. He wants to get the kill on Sweetie before he goes down. Um, and Sweetie is retreating because he knows that usually the IS-3 will be able to take him down. And the IS-3 is flanking well, but... Oh, <laughs> but IS-3 misses the shot, absolutely dunk the shot, it didn't even go near Sweetie. And <laughs> Sweetie gets the 6th kill, securing the top gun on the T-30, uh, on the enemy IS-6. But Sweetie should have been dead by now, I, <laughs> I can't believe his luck. I mean, it was skill, he played very skillfully, but I mean... That IS-6, I can't believe that he donked that shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, that was a really good game. Uh, Sweetie basically really carrying his team on that flank. And one thing that I'm just noticing here is if you get some strange background noises, uh, that's the foghorn going, like, mad here. So, <laughs> I'm sorry for that, but um, it can't really be helped. So, yeah, anyway... Um, this was the game, and this was actually the very last best for rest video, as I pointed out. But before we come to a conclusion, let's quickly check out the post game stats because, I mean, they are quite awesome. You will see for yourself. So, here are the results of Sweetie's game in his T32 on Murovanka. 
he managed to pick up 107,668 credits. That is amazing. And also, he got 2,962 experience. That was non-doubled, but he had a premium account. Still, that was enough to get his mastery badge, ace tanker, a Spartan medal, steel wall, top gun, high caliber, <laughs> confederate, and tank snipe. Now, this is something I've I've hardly ever seen before. He managed to get Top Gun and Confederate in one game. That is really cool. And just look at all these medals that he got. And look at the list of damage and spotted and critted and killed enemy tanks. It's just enormous. In the team score, we can see that he obviously came first getting 1,975 experience, which is just ridiculously much. <laughs> you know, look at the next best on his team, but it was a VK3002M, getting only 653. So he got nearly four times as much as the second best on his team. Uh, it's I think it's fair to say that Sweetie here carried his team through this game, and without Sweetie, his team would have definitely lost. We can see that the enemy team actually mostly actually did better than the uh, Swedes team considering that they lost if they had won they would have easily gotten more experience than uh, the guys in Swedes team so Swedes was really the carrying factor in this game he dealt out 7114 damage that's just ridiculous in the tier 8 tank and he got 6 kills so that's really really good in the detailed report, we can see that Sweetie fired 34 shots, which is a lot for a slow-firing gun like the T-32's 105mm. Of these, 29 hit, which is actually quite impressive considering that this gun, I think, only gets 0.4 accuracy. And 24 penetrate, which is also quite nice. That allowed him to do this amazing amount of damage. And believe me, in my Fosh 155, which is my only tier 10 tank destroyer at the moment, you know, I would be really proud of that result. And um, I think this is the highest damage score we've seen so far in the replay contest. And uh, yeah, this is just really massive as a tier 8 heavy tank. And I think this is one of the highest, if not the highest damage score I've ever seen in a tier 8 replay. He received 24 hits, of which only 9 penned and 15 didn't. Uh, giving him 6,505 potential damage, which is just ridiculous. And, I mean, it just really shows that Sweetie put his armor to great work in this game, going hull down, using undulations, and really making the most of his tank's abilities. Uh, he didn't detect any enemies, and didn't cause damage to allies, which is nice, of course. Uh, he damaged... 12 enemies, that's nearly the entire enemy team, destroyed 6, which is half of them, so that means that it still allowed him to get the confederate medal, and also picked up 1661 spotting damage. He picked up 2 defense points, which is not very much, but it's still nice, and uh, strangely enough, we're not getting a, a distance he traveled, so that's weird, but you know, never mind. We can see that, although he got this ridiculously high amount of 107,000 credits, and that's you know, without any specials going on or so, that's just normal, which would be amazing for a T8 premium tank, this is a standard tank. So, although he got this huge amount of credits, he still had to pay nearly half of that for ammunition resupplies and repairs, that's just because he fired these 34 shots, which is really a lot, and it costs 1,000 credits a shot in the T-32. Still, he walked away from this game with 57,968 credits, which is really, really nice. And... I'm, you know, I'm really sorry for Sweetie that he couldn't uh, come in as one of the first three and get a prize because I would have really liked to give you a prize, Sweetie, for this amazing game in your T32. <laughs> Believe me, it was really close. You would have nearly gotten into those top three. But, you know, still, I want to give a massive shout out to you, bro. Thanks a lot for sending this in. Uh, it was an amazing game to watch. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And, uh, you know, you're welcome to join me on the live server or the test server if you want to play a game with me. PM me in the chat or something. And, uh, yeah, we can have a spin together. Maybe even in our T32s. Um, and, yeah, thanks a lot for sending this in. And, yeah, I'm sorry that you could win, but I hope you appreciate that I uploaded this replay all the same. And um, thanks to you guys for watching it. Stay tuned because next weekend I'll have the... Uh, 
third place coming up and then the other two winners in the two weeks after that so there's some great stuff coming up i hope you're looking forward to that as much as i am and i'm not sure maybe there's a tutorial or a review coming up tomorrow we'll see but um thanks for watching anyway and i hope i see you in the next video bye bye